Fantastic. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our second episode of e-commerce exposed. We will just wait a minute for um, any latecomers to get dialed in and join us. Leah, while we wait, I would love to hear about your own Black Friday experience. I won't lie, this year I felt a little paralyzed by choice. In the end, I ended up buying very unglamorously a new hairdryer, and that was it. But I'd yeah. love to hear, while we wait for people to join us, how did you feel about this Black Friday personally? Did you buy anything? How did it go? So I actually did my Black Friday shopping a lot earlier this year than normal because all of the brands that I was stocking and had on my like to buy list, I have a little notes app on my phone. They were doing sales all the way in September and October that were the same That's discount so as during Black Friday. So my one thing is I caved and bought a pair of sheer text tights. I'll talk about that a little bit Ooh. more because their campaign was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We'll put it that way. Um, and I got some like restock of some like electrolytes and all kinds of supplements because that's my biggest obsession. So a lot <laughs> of self buys. The one thing I wanted to buy and I just couldn't talk myself into it is a standing desk, like walking pad, um, like treadmill for the standing desk. Oh, not just a standing desk, but a proper moving standing desk. Yeah, wow. yeah I gotta get those steps in, right? But I just couldn't do it. I was like, I don't know if I can be creative and walk on this thing. I don't know how people do it. <laughs> Oh, that's, I like the um, self buy. That's a good ex expression. Um, I think it, it, it is Black Friday is a good time to do Christmas shopping, but it's also a time to treat yourself, isn't it? So totally, that's. totally. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're two minutes past the hour, so I think we'll get started. Uh, another big hello to everybody who's joining us for our next e-commerce exposed session, the Black Friday debrief. I'm Fiona Stevens, mar marketing director at Loyalty Line, and today we're here to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. On the latest few weeks of sales. But the best thing about this webinar series, the sessions are just 15 minutes. So there's no need to multitask, put everything on hold, put everything on pause, and just take in the expertise of our speaker. And on that note, I'm super excited to announce that we have Leah Gucciardi here with us today. Leah, could you just tell us a bit about yourself? Who are you? What do you do in the Shopify space? Yeah, and you nailed my last name. So impressed, actually. <laughs> it's rare. I have a good so, so I'm a creative director. I've been in the e-commerce and digital marketing space since literally I was 18 years old and that dates me. So um, I do uh, conversion rate optimization, design and build specifically for the lifestyle, wellness and health space for women owned brands. And our kind of angle is we like to infuse really engaging storytelling in everything that we do. So I'm excited to talk a little bit about how I have I've been thinking about that in the context of Black Friday this year. Um, and I'm excited to kind of talk about that in the context of loyalty specifically too. So, I mean, you've hit my weak spot immediately. Storytelling brands is my favorite thing. So I'm super excited. Um, so we've already talked about our personal Black Friday experiences. So now let's get stuck into the professional. Leah, can you talk us through the good things that you've seen over the past few weeks? Who's been creative? Who's been successful? Who has stood out for you this Black Friday? Mm -hmm. So one of the brands that stood out to me very early on this year is called Three Ships Beauty. They did actually a very, very smart campaign leading up to their Black Friday sale that was very customer acquisition driven where they did like a free trial sample and all you had to pay for was shipping, which was the perfect way to get brand new eyeballs in a very low risk format as like new customers to try their product for the first time, have an opinion of it, be able to try it for long enough to see how it reacted to their skin and that kind of thing, which is really, really smart, especially in the beauty industry. And then retargeted those people for a gift bundle or some of their limited edition sets that were on sale for Black Friday that had some of the same products, maybe different lineups and mixtures. So that was really, really smart. You can go and actually stock their uh, meta ads and see what their funnel looked like on the meta ads library. Um, but that was one that I thought was just so smart. And I went into retail to purchase the trial set myself um, because it was very, very compelling. So that one was fantastic. Um, another one that I loved as well 
is I saw a lot of brands really leveraging social media to create a lot of desire in their campaigns this year that were not coupon driven, which mm. was really, really interesting. So we all know that as brands organic reach, especially at this time of year, when it really is a pay to play game with ad spend, organic reach just has tanked off a cliff. And it's so important for getting frequency touch points with like your most engaged customers. And so getting really creative with like how you can get into people's DMs and looking at your stories and things like that on TikTok and Instagram, where those platforms have your like hottest, highest converting customers is more challenging than ever, but really is just requires some creative thought. So there are brands doing like, if you post your, um, uh, your order to your stories with your receipt, we're going to refund you for like the first 10 customers that do it. And that created just a sense of like free exposure, A, for all of these people who contributed. You're getting mentions of other people in your story. So you're going to be pushed to their feed more frequently in the future. Um, and you're also showcasing like how desirable your brand is to others that they would even take that gamble, mm. even if they didn't get the order refunded. Um, so a lot of really, really clever promotions this year that I thought were a lot more kind of out of the box thinking than just 20% off and that feeling of like, that's not even that great of a discount, to be honest. So mm. I, I love that people saw outside the box slightly. I think, you know, it is a lot about discounts. You probably can't get away from it. You're going to have to do it. But what else can you do around the discounts? And I think, you know, that that creativity is really great to see. Also, really you're, you know, you're slightly biased, I admit, but your existing customers are great advocates. And yeah, it, it, you, know, you can run a referral program, this, that, and the other, but actually there's, I don't think anything beats just real social engagement and posts about something you've bought. I'm not sure you can get better than that. Really. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So something that I have been paying attention to a lot is we're kind of coming out of this season after lockdowns and COVID and overconsumption to kind of like tamper our emotions about <laughs> the state of the world mm -hmm. um, and like self gifting that we were talking about into I think people are really returning more to gifting for others and trying things and being part of a community is having such a much higher importance in, I think, the global atmosphere. So um, I've been watching and listening to this documentary and book um, called The Fourth Turning. And it's it's a little woo-woo, but we'll just put it out there. It's very, very interesting that we kind of go through these cycles as humans. And we are coming more into that season where people want that gathering and community and being part of the tribe aspect instead of hyper-individualism. So I really love to see that brands mm -hmm. are seeing that kind of future and infusing that into their promotion strategy. I, I completely agree. We um we focused we did a lot of work around community a couple of years ago actually um during the lockdown process. And um one of the brands that we saw doing super well with this was Astrid and Me. Mm -hmm. They're a jewelry brand here in the UK expanding into the US. And they just completely got the community part. So for them, it, it wasn't about discounts. It was about, we're here for you as a community. Here's how you connect with other people when you perhaps can't leave the house. Here's how you, you know, here's the content you need to feel like you're part of a community. They, they did it so well. And actually I really, over um, Black Friday, they did a great email campaign. It was It was before the sale, but it was about their loyalty program, but it was more than just a program. It was their community. And it was all, it was almost a, sort of interview style this is what we love about our loyalty program and it, it really positioned it as something that you wanted to be part of so a mm -hmm. brand that you wanted to shop with over the sale because you would you wouldn't just be shopping you'd be part of something a little bit bigger it was it was very effective um so yeah i couldn't couldn't agree more so um that's the good now let's dig into the bad or perhaps even the ugly is there anything you've seen that made you think, oh, oh no, I wouldn't have done that? Oh, um, there's so many things that gave me the ick this year. I even did a <laughs> poll with my community and they all kind of mirrored what I was thinking too. Really? Um, I don't know what has been going on with the surprise sale extended, sale extended another day. Oh, it's still Cyber Monday, but it's Thursday. And I, I just have to say that like, I think people forget that Black Friday was created mostly for like the tech sector, um, or sorry, the electronic sector, where models go out, and then they have to discount them because if the new ones are coming out, uh, they're basically they need to clear inventory. And if you're a wellness and beauty brand, 
you're kind of doing yourself a disservice to give that same sort of discount because you're then giving your customers who would reorder your product at full price more frequently, basically overstocking them for months and months and then wondering why your sales are suffering in the new year because they've already got their face cleanser on hand until March and it doesn't go bad, right? Mm -hmm. So I just don't think that it's the smartest way and probably one of the reasons why no one is really in the black Black Friday until we get to this time of year because you're relying too much and devaluing your brand when people will just wait you out for the next sale is really what you're doing long term. So that community aspect you're talking about fee is so paramount and I don't think that people really know how to leverage that. But one of the biggest icks I saw in particular is talking about sheer text. They had launched a 30% um, off I think $35 site-wide sale way back in September. They launched their Black Friday sale in September. in September. They even called it pre Black Friday sale. Mm. And while I thought it was so smart, they were calling it the best deal of the year for the last quarter. Mm. And how do you compete with that? And even during Black Friday, they had a faux like waiting room countdown timer on their site. So every time you refresh, no matter what you had in your cart, you had to wait seven seconds before you could click anywhere on the site to create yeah. some like false sense of urgency. I've also seen faux mm -hmm. countdown timers that reset every time you visit the store too. And just a lot of that stuff that is just like, it's really lying to your consumer and people know they're not stupid. <laughs> so I think that's the problem. They do, they do know. Uh, even yeah. Black, there was a, there was a time when you would go to your local store and queue up and perhaps even fight in the aisles over a product. But now, Consumers are aware that they can get a better deal over, over Black Friday, but that means that as marketers, we've lost that element of surprise or VIP mm -hmm. or, you know, I actually, I have to say it's one, that was one of the things I wrote down as an ick as well, just the the early access. It, it's losing its VIP appeal. appeal. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't have Black Friday and Cyber Monday, you now have Black Week and Cyber Week and people launching in September. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not enough to make your customers feel special anymore. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a real challenge because I, I can completely understand why people are doing it and I can see why those discounts are so important. But, you know, I saw discounts as big as 55% last week. Yeah, which is exciting if it was like one or two days and you really felt like you scored. But um, I know that um, the founder of Mala, the brand who has a candle business here in Canada, posted a message that a lot of the small to medium sized businesses are really relying on this season to just break even and keep them afloat into next year. And I really strongly feel that really understanding how to build community and have an evergreen sales strategy and really understand your customer at that level, like they're your best friend and you're in their ear year round can really change the game instead of having to rely on coupons and discounts and devaluing your brand year round just for Black Friday to come around. So it really yeah. should be more of an inventory clear out than like, just please give me money so I can survive another season, right? Yeah, and unfortunately 55% is not gonna help you make money either. You know, no. you, there has to be a way, and this is where we get to sort of tiered discounts. If you can look at who your returning customers are and offer them a, they offer them 55%, great, because you know they're having a higher average order value, they're gonna come back and repeat purchase. But mm -hmm. if you limit it to 20% for those new customers, you'll still get them through. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was, there was a little bit too much of the blanket discount, I felt. Yeah. yeah, or even better, I would love to see beauty wellness brands in particular be able to really smartly offer discounts where they're trying to get their customers to try adjacent products that would complement yeah. the lineup, right? If you buy a facial cleanser, what is every beauty brand's biggest struggle is getting the same customer to expand their usage of other complementary products. Mm. So why are you, you know, giving them a discount, something they buy anyway, instead of an incentive to add something to their routine. And that is, I think, industry-wide, regardless of whether you're in beauty, wellness or mm. not, to really think about that more longevity of of how can you get that customer to discover more from you instead of just stock up and not buy from you until March of next year. Definitely. And to be honest, beauty brands almost have it slightly easier there because you have a cleanser, you have a toner, you have a shampoo, you have a conditioner, you have a... Yeah. I can't, I can't think of another one. But <laughs> that's far harder with fashion. You could have a dress and a belt, but it's it's not as obvious. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a much harder sell. So, yeah. Fantastic. So for our third and final question, 
If every brand out there had a final budget next Black Friday, where do you think they should invest that budget and why? What would it help them to achieve? Community engagement so they can gather insights. And I mean, getting into the messages and direct contact with the best customers who could become your advocates year round to see what's top of mind, to see what you're missing in new insights that could inform a new campaign or new product launch, a new collaboration. That's going to have a lot more lifespan and give you more evergreen marketing to fall back on as your first line of defense than just defaulting to discounts um, because that should be special to this time of year. Mm. Hundred, I couldn't agree more. Do you think it's worth brands doing some market research surveys and things? You know, earlier in the year, find out who the collaborations should be. Find out, oh, yeah. perhaps, perhaps get them into focus groups about products, etc. Is it okay? I love that you said that because I'm make, making a freebie right now for anyone who's interested in leveraging their loyalty program next year that is coming from a more community-based angle. So it is going to be from the perspective of how can you actually push your loyalty program like a launch of a product for two or three weeks to increase enrollment, but not rely on discounts. So things like manual rewards to incentivize your customers to fill out a survey or get into a next tier if they provide their input can give you such a wealth of knowledge that you can use year round. So I'm going to put that in my bio shortly after this live is over. And I really would love for you guys to download it and tell me what you think afterwards as well. The funny thing is, I honestly didn't know she was going to say that. So that is, <laughs> that is a complete coincidence, but fantastic. And I think it's very, um, it's very timely. We're seeing a lot of brands start to reward uh, members for completing quizzes and online profiles. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it's useful for the consumer because obviously they what skin type they are, what hair type they are, they can buy the right products, but it's also incredibly useful for you as a brand because you get more information, more information you can use to personalize your experiences, but also more collective data that you can use to understand what's what's going on with your members. So And put them in cohorts. I think that <laughs> is a really interesting insight people are missing too. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think there's an awful lot of future in that. Fantastic. So that is it. The good, the bad and the ugly of Black Friday and hopefully actually some insights that will help you to make adjustments to ensure you make the most of the time between now and January too. We know that you, you know, unfortunately, there's a bit more discounting to go. So hopefully there's something in here for everybody in that time too. Leah, thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts and experiences with us. If you would like to pick Leah's brains further, I'm sure she would be more than happy to connect on LinkedIn. So please do look her up. Thanks also to all of you for joining us for this episode. We will be making the recording available online in case you missed anything or you want to share with other team members or colleagues too. Please do look out for details of our next webinar. It's coming soon and it's all about the trends that Shopify stores should expect in 2024. Until then, goodbye and good luck with the rest of your sales season. Bye everyone.